Hi there everyone. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us and sharing part of your Sunday. It's a bit of a crisp mid-March day today, so I really appreciate you coming and spending some time. We're going to be looking into the process of introducing our feathered one to a dark box. We're going to look at the steps to get him or her comfortable with that, what we can expect in terms of her reaction to being introduced to the dark box. We're going to discuss ultimately that it's ideal if we can get them comfortable to travel in their dark box without their hood on and why, and the advantage of being able to travel our feathered one in a dark box, especially if we're going to be covering quite a bit of ground uh, in, a, in a traveling day. Now, before we do that, there's been some discussions or descriptors used to describe a dark box. And what I'm referring to is the term, the giant hood. Now, the Oxford Dictionary defines hood as a part of, a cl of clothing that you pull over the back and top of your head. So think of something like a hoodie or the hood of your coat. It's also referred to as a piece of cloth that is put over someone's face so that they can't be recognized or so that they can't see. It's also a slang term. So think neighborhood, and cutting it down to hood. You know, boys in the hood, right? It's a slang term. The definition of giant, there's a few, but the main ones, the ones that are important. So giant in stories, typically refers to a large, strong person who is usually cruel or stupid. Well, I don't think he's particularly cruel or stupid, but I suspect we could define him as maybe dumb. Another definition for giant is an unusually large person, animal, or plant. Well, I, I don't think we can say he's unusually large. So no. And finally, giant is also used to define someone who has done something huge in the world something really important. Think Neil Armstrong or Steve Jobs. So a person like Steve Jobs was way ahead of his time. A huge thinker, a, a, a great uh, conceptualizing individual who could come up with incredible ideas in tech and computers. Not so much. So I think we can agree that this is a box and when the door is closed, a feathered one's going to find it particularly dark in there. Thus, dark box. Right? So now that we've dealt with that, why don't we just carry on and get into the process of introducing our feathered one to a dark box. Right. So Mojave loves traveling in a dark box. It's kind of his little miniature microscopic tiny infinitesimal you get the idea fortress of solitude. So ultimately what we want in terms of a response to seeing the dark box having a sense that you're flurrying around for a reason. What we want is this from our feathered one. Okay? Now, we never untie the leash until the door is secure. So, how do we accomplish that? Now, Mo is helping me out. Normally, I give him just a little pressure at the side of the top of his tail to remind him to turn around and face the door. He's doing that for me. So, Door is closed. Get it latched. 
Now I can safely untie him from my gauntlet. Right, and I can go through the top of the latch, or I can go through the top of the handle. Most dark boxes have at least a handle to tie off to. I've seen latches with very large openings right here that allow a, a fatter leash like the one he has on today to go through them. And then you would tie the falconer's knot. Now, in reverse, I've arrived at wherever it was I was going. So, I let, I've got him out of the truck. He's sort of felt the earth moving under his feet. Play that song in your mind. Okay, so I've been talking to him. Hey Mo, hey, we're here bud, we're here. Just a second. And he's usually peeping away at me like, yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready to get out of here. Tie off to your glove first. Now he's secure, okay? You can hear him talking to me right now. Yes, Mo, hi, hi. Hi, I'm coming. Now, I don't want him to leap out. I'm going to take control of the leash. And I'm going to ask him to step up to me. Okay? All right. Fair enough? Right. So, let's go through the whole process from start to finish once again and see how it looks. Okay? So, dark box is closed. Open the door. safe and secure. I won't say snug as a bug in a rug, because I don't like to think about bugs and rugs. Just me. Okay, and in reverse. Mo! Hey Mo, we're here. Hey bud, you ready? You ready? You ready Mo? Are you sleeping in there? You go, good lad, good boy. Okay, good job. Moving on, <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> okay, so recall our little video on introducing our feathered one to the hood. Well, we've accomplished that, we've got them good to the hood. We remember that good to the hood means that they'll accept the hood, they'll actually put their little head right on in there for us, okay? And get it where it feels comfortable, just like you or I. Okay, maybe not so much comfortable, but acceptable. Just like you or I would put on a motorcycle helmet. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna ask him to put his little head in there. You see how he did that for me? Now, remembering when we're traveling with our feathered one in a dark box. If they're hooded, they need us to help them accept the confined space, particularly when they're first being introduced to it. One of the things you can expect your youngster to do, or even a, uh, a feathered one who has, say, never been introduced to the dark box, and now for one reason or another you need them to get used to it and accept it, is that as they realize, as their wings or their tail touch the walls of the inside of the box, they're going to realize that things are touching them. At least in their mind, that's how they're going to compute it. Something's touching me. Something is going to grab me. So they often don't react to it very well. What we need to do is help them to learn. We need to be their guide, po guide post. We need to lead them. In much the same way that when we're training our puppy at home, we need to be the leader. We need to show them the way and give them the confidence to proceed and try. Okay, so Halo is comfortable with traveling in a dark box, but we'll go through the steps as if he were brand new to it. All right, so 
I have my feathered one hooded. And remembering, particularly with the falcon, what we want to do is protect that tail from the longleaf astro turf on the perch. So I'm going to scoop the tail with the back of my free hand. Step. So there he is inside his dark box. If she's brand new, you're going to go one, two, three, four. Right about now she's starting to lose her mind because things are touching her. Five. Before she can panic and start to hurt herself and get trapped down below the perch, that's when we want to be opening the door, reaching under the Jess's step, take her out. All right. Now, we've managed to get four or five seconds before she started to lose her mind. So let's go for a little bit more. Okay, once again, placing her in the dark box, making sure to scoop that tail. Protect it as much as you can from that long leaf astroturf as she's stepping back. Let's see her. There you go. Step, step. Watch your tail. Watch your tail. Right. One. Two, three, four. Let's see if we can get to 10 seconds this time, or even 15. If she's sitting quietly inside her box, don't open the door yet. Keep talking to her. Good job, Halo. Good job. That's not so bad, is it? That's okay. Reassuring. Your voice, the energy of your voice, is conveying there is nothing here to be frightened of. Nothing's going to hurt you. Now, you're going to shampoo, rinse, repeat with this until you can get to a minute or two minutes where she's not panicking. Work to her strength. If she'll only give you three seconds, three seconds it is. If she'll give you ten, fabulous. If she'll give you half a minute, even better. So on and so forth. Do it in short lessons several times a day. Now let's say you're planning a trip that's a week hence, you want her to be comfortable by then. So you've got seven days to get her comfortable with this and usually within two or three, unless it's a very peculiar situation, say a breeding bird who's never been in a dark box before, has no idea what's going on, you're gonna have to take your time. Shorter lessons, more of them through the day. But let's say for the sake of argument, you're going to do this three or four times through the day, each time keeping it to about five minutes total, trying to stretch how long she'll accept being in there before you hear her spinning around and beginning to bump into the walls of the box and lose her mind. Okay? So once again, just like with Mojave, once I have the door closed, I want to latch it. And now, I can take the leash from my gauntlet. All good. You can even take it as far as, you know, if you really want to, tying it off. Really no need, because once it's through that latch, and the door's latched closed, he or she is not coming out of that dark box, even if it's a big goldie. And usually in a big box like that, you've got more than just two latches, and probably a locking mechanism as well. Okay? Now, here's where things are going to get a little more interesting. I want to be able to travel Halo without his hood on. Now, why would I want to do that? Sometimes, for film work, or if we're visiting a summer camp that's more than half a day's drive away, it's better for them if they don't have to have their hood on while they're traveling. He's already in a dark, enclosed space. So that's going to, ideally, keep him calm. He shouldn't be bashing around, moving around in there much anyway. But if we don't have to have them hooded, it's better. It's better for their eyes. It's better for their sense of self-possession. It's just better. Likewise, we want them to also be polite. We want them to be well-mannered when they're coming out of their dark box without a hood on. Now, both of the red tails that I have personally stewarded, 
I never hooded them. I know it's commonplace. Many people do. My personal approach on that and my experience with that is that it can tend to bring out the worst in a red tail, particularly with hooding. Now there's a whole discussion there and you know what to do if we're going to do that. We'll start a conversation down below. But if we're not hooding a falcon for traveling in a dark box, we want them to be well-mannered. In other words, I don't want him bursting out the moment the door cracks open. I want him to politely sit, sit there the way that Mojave did and step up onto my glove. I want him to trust me enough to know we're safe, the glove's there, something fun is going to happen. Okay, so you and I are going to see how Halo accepts being placed in the dark box, if I can even get him in there, without his hood on. Let's see how that goes. Hey, hello. Hey, bud. You ready? Hey, you ready? Door's going to open in a second here. Hey, partner. Hey, partner. No, turn around. Turn around. And step. Okay. I can already tell this is going to be interesting. You know, I really have to do something about the kind of television watching he's doing at night. His language. Okay. So, that didn't go very well. <laughs> I have some work to do. Uh, we have some work to do. And you know what? We'll do that as a follow-up spot to show you his progress. But ultimately, that's what we want to be able to do. It's kinder. It's a gentler way. It's a way that's going to build more trust if you can get them to the place where they will travel in a dark box with their hood off. I've had tremendous success with many falcons and, of course, both my red tails over the years, traveling them that way. They're much more comfortable. They're more reassured. They just feel better about the experience of traveling when they don't have to have a hood on. So, once again, if you have any questions, if you have some tips or tricks that you have found work really, really well in terms of introducing your feathered ones to the dark box, please, let's have a conversation. Share it so that other people can learn from you. I'd love to hear from you myself. Always got lots to learn. Give us a like. Please subscribe. Spread the word. Let your, you know, your psychiatrist know about us, you know, your... Uh, your friendly neighborhood post office worker. You know, just get the word out about us. We're eager to make new friends. We love subscribers here, guys. So thanks again for coming out on this wintry mid-March day. Crisp weather. I'm going to go inside and get myself a nice warm cup of tea. I hope you'll join me. Thanks again for sharing some time with us. Cheers. Bye for now.